On this DVD, you'll learn how Alan sculpted the base and mounted the horse and rider, the buffalo skull, and the buffalo bull to finish taking the bull with the bow. We'll also show you how we framed the piece. As a bonus, at the end of that, I'll demonstrate how to pose two of our starter casts, a half life-size Brad Pitt sculpture and a quarter life-size traditional dancer, which I clothe. This is the ground section for the bronze taking the bull with the bow. It was a pedestal piece. I'm going to make a relief ground section out of this for a relief sculpture to hang on the wall. So I'm cutting a straight line. I've determined the width that I want this to be. It's about seven inches. I'm going to save that section that I just cut off. And here I'm going to demonstrate how not to cut paper. Always lay it down and use a cutting board. You could break that knife off and it could hurt you. So don't, don't cut the way I just showed you. Now I'm going to cut out these sections that the um, the foundry uses to register my sculptures on top, the rider and the buffalo. And I'm going to cut this one more time. Now I have th cut this into three sections. And I'm going to use those for the base. It's about seven inches. This is PVC board. I'm going to laminate with spray mount on top of this. I'm using it as a template to trace it out on mat board. This is foam board underneath, half inch foam board. I'll use that later. Now I'm going to cut out that mat board. I used the PVC for my template. It's about four inches wide and about 36 inches long. And I'm going to do that twice. Now there's my acid-free mat board. And this is Super 77 spray mount. Get that in any hardware store just about. I'll spray the mat board and the PVC board. And I'm going to register that mat board right on top my PVC. And I do that because now I have paper sticking to basically it's plastic and I can put my paper on top of that rather than the plastic. The PVC is acid free too though and so is the spray mount. And here's my other piece and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Get it registered on there as good as I can. I like to cover any of that PVC that I'm going to use with paper. If I'm, my paper is going to be on top, I have to have mat board on top of that PVC. These ground sections are going to be the ends of the the base which is going to be a relief and this is my foam board which I'm going to use to fabricate sort of a uh, infrastructure underneath that 
relief base. Something to hang everything on. Now I'm cutting that the size I want it. These measurements aren't really important. I just want you to see how I'm doing this. You'll use your own measurements for your own sculptures. That's my two sections of laminated PVC board with mat board on top. And you can see I'm making kind of a right angle. And with the foam board, I'm going to cut that into some sections that will go inside this relief base. Like that. Now I'm making these the size I want them to be for the base. I just cut it with an X-Acto knife and a straight edge. Now I'm going to freehand this. Cutting it sort of in half at, a, at an angle, freehanding it. And I'll use both halves of that. And I'll do that again. So now I have four. And then I'll do it some more. To give me plenty of them to go inside. This is clear silicone. Get that in any hardware store too. And I'm going to set up my right angle. Of my two pieces of laminated PVC. And now I'm taking these triangles that I cut that have a crooked side. And I'm going to use those with the silicone to hold this together at the same time, creating a structure that I can build onto. It'll hold all my paper. And there it is. And then I'll sculpt on top of that. And I'll use these casted sections also. You won't be able to tell when I'm finished what's sculpted and what casts I use. Like I said, I, normally I sculpt the whole thing, but I have these sections, so I'm going to use those of, uh, of the cast. This is a little strip of... Uh, mat board that I'm going to put on the bottom to cover the bottom part where the PVC is. And I just silicone that on. I'm going to take these bricks and I'm going to lay this under here. This is all dried. It, it took oh, about an hour to dry. Now I'm going to put some screws in through the PVC just just to strengthen it, hold it all together. Put three in. And now this is my cast. I'm just trying these to see where I want to put them. Now this is more silicone on the end of that foam board. And I'm going to take one more section of foam board 
and lay it down. This is half inch foam board, so it's about the same thickness as I have, and I can lay my paper on top of that. And these are some sections of foam board that, uh, that I'm going to silicone on the side. This will be the sides of it. Just give me, giving me something underneath to lay paper on. Now I want to cut the corners off so I can get my casts where I want them. That fits pretty good and I do the same on the other side. Except I don't want this edge quite the way it is so I'm going to cut it just so I can bend it down a little bit to give me the edge that I want that'll be on the outside this is the EFA pulp paper blankets that we use to cast with and to sculpt with I'm going to use it to sculpt with here Peel it. That's why we call them blankets. Peel it back. Got a little blanket of paper. And I'm going to wet it with a uh, bonding agent on both sides. And I'm going to wet the bottom of the cast with that too. The underneath part of the cast. And then I'm going to lay my pulp in there, and that's going to fuse down to my paper, the mat board, and the foam board. I'm going to fill that square hole and sculpt in ground there. Use my paddle burnisher to help me do that. Now I'm going to start laying this pulp in for ground. And what I'm going to do is sculpt into the ground that I already have. You can see why I, I use that ground section. I had it and it just gives me less to sculpt with. There's already some rocks in there. I'll add more rocks later. And I'm sculpting with this pulp, these pulp blankets, and I'm not really doing anything but covering, and that pulp gives you a nice texture on the surface that will look like ground when I'm done. It works pretty well. I sculpt a lot of things with the pulp. Now there's that section I cut off and I'm going to lay that in there too and, and again I'm going to put some pulp on the bottom. It'll fuse to the cast and then it'll stick down to that foam board that I'm laying it on. And that's just that much less of this relief base that I have to sculpt. So I'm going to lay in the rest of this with the pulp. And I want to cover my seams and sculpt on top of that cast a little bit just to marry the two together, the pulp and the cast. This is some thicker soft paper and what I'm going to do with this I'm coating both sides of that with the bonding agent and I'm going to lay this across the back and fold it over on both sides the underneath on the foam board crooked edged triangle sections that are on the bottom and on the top this back part is what will mount to the backboard when we frame it. It's PVC in there and that'll give me a good strong mount. And there's my
structure underneath with the foam board. You can see that clearly. Now what I'm going to do here is lay in some acid-free cotton sheets. They're not real expensive, but they're strong. And I'm going to lay this right on top of that structure underneath to give it some strength before I put my paper on top of that. I wet it first and then I kind of wrinkled it up. This will give me a little more texture underneath. I wet it because if I don't wet it first, it will tear. So I wet it and it also softens it a little bit so I can form it. And again, this is sort of um, an underlayment for my paper. Just to lay it down and, and strengthen the bottom part because there's some gaps between that foam board. And if I just lay my pulp or my paper in there, then the, the, it'll fall between those gaps. But this will hold everything on a little bit better. Now there's my acid-free cotton sheets. That is the underlayment. Now I'm taking some of the pulp and I'm laying that on top of that. Those cotton sheets. This will be real strong when I'm finished and it'll have a nice earthy texture underneath like rocks. Gives it a nice relief base to look at for a wall hanging. You can see I overlap that so everything hangs together. When it dries It'll be very strong and over the ends too. Now there's my relief ground section for my sculptures that I'll put on top of that. My buffalo hunt. I'm sculpting in on the edge. This is actually the furthest out of the piece and I'm working actually on the surface of the ground where my sculptures are going to be mounted and I've started to dry it with my fan already as I take some of that pulp and add some more rocks people like to find things in the sculptures all the detail a lot of those rocks will be in the grass, hidden. Some of them will be easily seen, some of them not as easily seen. But now I'm drying that. And here it is all dry and you really can't tell what is cast and what is sculpted. It all looks the same. And that's the underneath part. That's the back, which will go against the mounting surface for the wall hanging, the backboard. Just like this. This is one of my old prototype sculpture stands. We've redesigned this so they're a little bit stronger, but it works just as well as my newer ones and I'm deciding where I want to screw this base structure onto my sculpture stand and I'm just using deck screws to do this just putting a couple on each side it's it's a pretty strong mount because it's going through PVC 
that's like wood and here's my buffalo that I'm going to mount and this is my rider that will go behind my buffalo he's hunting this buffalo and that's where I want to mount it I've got piece of steel in there and hit the buffalo's leg because I really wasn't sure whether I was going to do it as a pedestal piece or a relief when I started that buffalo. Now I'm going to drill a hole through that PVC with the same size drill bit as that threaded steel rod that's in the buffalo's leg and I have to open up the bottom see where I came through to do this mount so I took it off my my base of my sculpture stand laid it down and now I'm looking through to find the hole now I'm going to put it back in my sculpture stand base and now mount the buffalo so I push that threaded steel through that hole through the PVC and wet it with my bonding agent just to get a little start there take it off my sculpture stand I've already started that wing nut that's going to hold that buffalo in place and I'm going to tighten it up with some pliers and I'm going to lock it in place with some silicone so that won't loosen up probably wouldn't anyway but just to be safe and even if it did loosen up probably wouldn't ever come off of there because of the way I mount this later on but now to cover that hole some more pulp that's what's on the bottom anyway and that'll fuse in just painted my bonding agent on there and laying it in with my hands and my brush pretty much the same way I formed in the ground anyway and that'll be seamless and it will be unseen no one will ever know that's how I mounted it just put enough on to cover all my cuts now I've put it back up and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to mark where the horse is going to go that's what I'm going to use to mount the horse it's a little piece of quarter inch board that we make and I'm using that board as a template to cut out where I want to put in that same triangle after I mount it to the horse's hoof horse is watching me do this he wants to make sure I get it right He's going to have to stand there for the rest of his life. Actually, he's running there. So I'm going to clean that out. It's still wet, actually. And check. Make sure everything fits right. Looks pretty good. And that's where the horse is going to go. So I've got it marked 
where I want that screw and I could use an awl but I'm using my knife there and I'm putting the screw through and backing it back out wetting it and same with the hoof I'm going to wet that too with the bonding agent and then I'm going to screw that triangle onto the hoof with a deck screw. A lot of paper in that horse. Now I'm going to use another deck screw and I'm going through that triangle mount right into that PVC board underneath to mount the horse. Now he's mounted. Now all I have to do is cover up that triangle. I put three screws in there. That'll hold him real good. And some paper. And I'm going to cover where I mounted him. Right over those screws, right over the paper and make that seamless there burnish it in cover all my cuts Sculpt in that wet paper with my sculpture tools and burnishers. Now I have my buffalo and my rider, who is the hunter, coming up behind the buffalo. Now this is grass, and I cut this on my toupee cat. And you can see I fold it in half before I cut it so I get two sections. And I'll cut that with my scissors to grass out my ground. Lay that in place. I've taken some bonding agent here and I'm pouring it into a lid that has a little rim inside. Then I'll determine how long I want my grass by holding it up. I want it about that long. So I'm going to take some scissors and I'm going to cut it on an angle because to me the tips of grass are kind of, they're not flat on the top, they're pointed, but I don't know if that's true. I dip it in the bonding agent and lay it in that little trough on the side of that cap. This lets that semi-hard paper soften up a lot. It just soaks in and that'll fuse right to that ground. All I have to do is take a section of that put this in place take a section of that grass and set it where I want it and it sticks. When that dries it's staying there, fusing in right now. Kind of falls down, but that's what grass does. I can give it a do later, but I, I've got a lot of grass to put on this ground, so. I'm gonna put it in fast, and, and I cut a lot of grass. I probably, used one sheet of paper for this. 
Just put it in where I want it, working my way across the ground surface, right between rocks and under his legs. Let it fall where I want, let it stand up where I want by working it the way I want to work it to make it do what I want it to do to behave. Kind of going in there and, and uh, manipulating those little pieces of grass the way I want them. And you can see the rider coming up behind the buffalo. as the grass grows underneath. This is kind of fun. It just sort of finishes everything and you can hide things in that grass. I've hidden arrows and turtles and rocks, sticks, even dolls in, in the grass that people find these items and and it's interesting because when they find something they take ownership over the piece and sometimes they they actually buy the piece because they found something in it and now all that detail just hide detail on top of detail this way here I'm using some tweezers pulling the grass aside to get it underneath that buffalo give me a little more length because I can't get my hand under there and you can see stalks of grass and clumps of grass just growing before your eyes now this this is the side that is actually going to go against the backboard I'm working on the opposite side that will be viewed but that grass will be seen it's underneath the buffalo and, and sort of behind the buffalo, but uh, in, in the back of the sculpture, but you can see it right there, what I just put in. This is my buffalo skull. I like to put buffalo skulls in, in hunting scenes. It sort of completes the story, and we all know the story of what happened to the buffalo. They were hunted to near extinction, but not by the Indians. It was by the white man that did that. And basically, when they did that, they put the Indians on the reservation and it ended this way of life. I'm putting that buffalo skull right over a rock. I put some paper on the rock and in that underneath part of the buffalo skull and some on the ground and then I can mount it right there and that'll fuse and some grass around the buffalo skull that toupee cat is really a handy tool for cutting hair and grass and fringe and things like that it's a tool that I invented and you can get that this putting it in where I want it trying to make it look natural it's uh, sort of like if people don't notice it, it's right because it doesn't stand out. It's supposed to be there. It's just grass. That's all it is. Just grass on the prairie growing with rocks around it, buffalo skull laying in it, and a buffalo running over it being hunted by a rider with a carb being on his back under his boat case and quiver with arrows in it hunter ready arrow in his mouth in case he doesn't get the first one between the ribs he's got another one ready Horse taking knee commands. He's going to come up on the right side of the buffalo and place that arrow between his ribs and 
that arrow could actually pass all the way through the buffalo. But if he wounds the buffalo, he can always go back and dispatch him with that Sharps carbine. He doesn't want to go back with a bow and arrow and try to approach a wounded buffalo closely. Again, I'm using the tweezers to lay the, uh, the grass under the legs of that horse. And then I can put it in with my hands where I'm not bothered by those horse's legs. And the grass is just growing. Seems to be growing. Now I'm going to give it a little do. Take my tuck tool burnisher and lay it down and stand it up and make it look natural. It's kind of fun. And you can see I'm doing this the same way I started as I finish up. It's just amazing how that fuses in. It just melts into that ground, that, that grass, after I've soaked it a little bit. It just, when that dries, it's there. And it, it sort of goes up the grass blades and even strengthens the grass. Kind of hydrates every little blade of grass with that bonding agent and makes it even stronger. We make all of our paper and it just works. We have our own secret formula and our own secret techniques to, to get it stiff and soft and pressed just to the right amount to sculpt with. And there's my my finish taking the bull with the bow wall hanging piece. You can see the skull there. A nice hunting piece. I've done several of these and there's an addition of 25 in both the uh, the wall hanging version and the pedestal version together 25. I'm not sure how many of each I will do in that 25 but each one is a one of a kind in limited edition so that's called limited edition originals because they're all a little different. There's the skull. And if I wanted to do that as a uh, pedestal piece, I'd basically do it the same way with plenty of PVC underneath the mount with. And I'd put the stainless steel in the legs of the horse and the buffalo. Now I've got to sign my piece. So I'm going to sign it on a piece of thin paper. This is a number two sheet. I've done this with number two or number one. And this is uh, number 425 on this particular one. And I sign it. I write, taking the bull with the bow. 425, 4 slash 25, Alan Eckman, Circle C, 2012. Now I'm going to tear 
that off. I've determined where I want to sign my piece. Now I get this trimmed out. Deckle edge or torn edge, I guess is a better term for this. So I can feather it in. I'm going to put it right there. So because this paper is so thin, I'm not going to wet the paper. I'm just going to wet the front of my base sculpture where I've determined to put my signature with some bonding agent and a brush and I'm going to lay that right where I want it, getting it straight and then I can take some more bonding agent on a brush and lay that down. I just use a pencil to sign with. Doing that for almost 25 years at this point. Works pretty good. And most of the pieces I've signed, I sign this way. Sometimes I'll sign the piece, but it's kind of hard to sign on something that's really textured. It's really flat and it's easier. Now I'll use my burnisher and make that look like I actually signed that base. People wonder how I do that so well. And if I blow it on my signature, I'll just tear another little sheet and, and put that on when I sign it. And if I blow up putting it on, then I'll Put in that, I'll, I'll take it off and do another one. Now here we're going to mount the finished piece on a backboard. This is PVC covered with black velvet type fabric. And you can order these. I'm using deck screws and washers. And I'm going to go through the PVC. Those are one inch screws. Uh, there's only quarter inch PVC on the backboard and half inch inside that base so I don't need very long screws and I put four of them in and this is a brass tube that I'm cutting here what I want to do is fit this behind the sculpture Keep, make sure it doesn't vibrate in there, especially that horse. The buffalo is pretty strong, but the horse, I want to really put that tube in, covered it with some more fabric, put it behind the buffalo too, just to keep him from moving. You can see how I'm doing this, and it goes right through the backboard inside that tube, a long enough screw to get through the tube and into the sculpture of that buffalo, which is like screwing it into wood, really. And I'm going to do that with the horse and rider, too. Get my measurements right on both sides so I know where I'm going to put that tube. Now, all that's left is the acrylic dust cover that goes over the backboard and it's screwed in place. Then just wipe the acrylic with some warm water. And if you want any of these, you can order those from us. It's a great display for your art. And as promised, this is that Brad Pitt sculpture we did for Ripley's Entertainment. It's in the Hollywood Museum and it's Brad Pitt in the movie Troy. This was a one-half life-size figure. 
and we sculpted this from a starter cast. You see he's in the round. This is a pedestal piece. His helmet's on the ground and he's inside the walls of Troy. This is the scene where he fights Hector actually outside the gates. And you can see it's Brad Pitt. This is how we started with a starter cast. There's his hands and ears and eyeballs and the body, one half life size, it's 36 inches from head to foot. So, there's his eyeball right there. And I'll trim it out using my knife. and scissors and I'm going to trim all around these casts getting all off all that excess there's some scissors And this is the back side of the cast. That's all got to come off. And I'll save all that scrap. Well, I might make rocks out of it or repulp it and use it to cast with or something. All trimmed up now. Here's all my trim. Now I'm going to tear some seam strips using uh, a clear piece of acrylic, quarter inch, and tearing thick paper. This is like a number five sheet. Because it's a big cast, I might go a little thicker on this paper to seam it with. Uh, those are my seam strips and my trim starter cast. Now I'm going to go around the rim. With some bonding agent. Doesn't look like it, but this is the inside of the cast. And now I'm going to lay the top on the bottom and register it together. Best I can. And using deck screws, that's a pretty long one. I got it started with my hand and I'm just going to screw it in all the way through to hold the cast together at the head. Now I'm going to work the arms. I used an awl to get the hole started to put a deck screw in there and with my screwdriver I put that through. Those deck screws, you want to make sure they're clean. I would run them through some foam board or something. They usually have a little oil on them. You make a black hole when you take it out. Then you have to ream it out with your X-Acto knife to clean the hole. So if you start with clean screws, you don't have to worry about it. But you can pick up those deck screws in any hardware store. Now I've got him registered together with the deck screws and I'm going to seam him with my seam strips laying them in with my brush and bonding agent sort of paint them on and then with a burnisher I 
I burn it, Shadan, and sculpt it in. So he's seamless. I took those seam strips and I tore them in half so they're not so long. That's my paddle burnisher that I invented. And it covers those bigger areas. Working around the feet and the toes. Even though he's going to wear shoes. I don't know why Achilles was wearing shoes when everybody in those days wore sandals, but I guess if you're Brad Pitt, you wear shoes. Anyway, uh, this is his hand. And I'm going to trim that out too. We're going to pose the hand off the sculpture and attach it later. Lay some bonding agent in there inside those casts all the way inside. Not just the edges, but the whole inside surface. And now I've cut some strips for the fingers. And I'll tear some too. And I'm going to want to make a good bond between the top of the hand and the bottom of the hand and the fingers. Making sure that uh, I got it not too thick because I want to have a hand that is about the right thickness. So now I'm going to, they've soaked in pretty good. I'm going to register these fingers together and the hand together. I'm just going to push it together. No pins, no tape, no screws, of course. And I'm going to seam it with my seam strips and burnish those on. I want to make sure that I can get a post in there to attach those hands to the wrist. So I don't want it to be too tight down at the bottom of that hand where the, where the wrist and the hand come together. You can see I'm seaming around those fingers, at least the outsides of the fingers. And I'm laying enough paper on to sculpt in round enough. You can see it's not registered together, it's not pressed together back there because when I sculpted these hands for the molds, they were flat. And that was my picture of Brad Pitt fighting Hector. I just uh, took that picture off of my television to get the pose I wanted. Now I'm pulling these screws out because the cast is dry. These longer ones I have to help out because there's no threads at the top of those long screws so I pull the back of it while I'm screwing it, backing it out with my screwdriver. Now I want to dissect this sculpture to create that pose you see. So I've got to cut him all apart and I usually make the same cuts no matter what the pose is. The cuts are usually pretty similar. So pay attention how I do this 
And if you ever want to use a starter cast to do this, you'll see it's pretty easy. Now that, that piece right there, when it casted, that's a piece of the pulp that blanket that didn't get enough bonding agent in there to fuse together. Doesn't happen very often, but I'll just stick it on and burnish it down and and it won't bother me again. So I've got an arm off and I've cut the back of the elbow and bent it. Now I'm going to cut his head off. Right along that neck muscle that attaches to the clavicle. And just circumcise the head. Now the head's off completely. Cut up short. Not too much neck there. We're going to put a neck in, but those muscles are still there. Now I'm going to cut the other arm off. I'm using my soft cutting board. It's just a piece of foam board covered with silicone. And when I cut through with my knife, I go into that and I don't wreck my blade. Now I'm cutting the back of the elbow so I can bend it in the inside. That's how arms work. They bend at the elbow. Now I'm cutting the leg off too. I sort of go up to the hip and cut down and across the bottom of the buttocks. And there's one leg and I'm going to bend this at the knee. They're both going to be bent at the knee. This one I'm going to show some kneecap because this one's not going to be bent as far. That is his mount leg. This leg is going to be bent a lot, so I'm going to actually circumcise this leg. Take it off, and you can see I, I've got to bend that leg a lot, so I'm going to take some off the back behind the knee and I'm going to do the same with the under part of the thigh this will give me an anatomical correction because when you bend things they get longer obviously because you have a gap in there now you can see how I fit that cut a little more off See, his right leg is really bent, and his left leg is the mountain leg. Just before he leaps. I've got him in the air there, and I can't have him floating in a pedestal piece. He's not in the air. So it's just before he jumps. So his left leg is a little bent, too. Now I'm taking a lot off the back of that thigh so I can really push that up in there to get to get that leg posed right. It's really bent. And I'm just looking at it. Really bent. Now I've got it registered where I want it. And I'm going to put a long deck screw through there to hold it together. So I kind of go through his shin and through the top of his leg, right through the femur if he had a femur, but he doesn't. I'm going to attach the leg to where the hip goes. And I'm going to bend the ankle right there.
Now I'm going to attach the arm at the shoulder. I'm just roughing in this pose, trying to get it to look like the picture before I start putting it all together permanently with my paper. Now another deck screw on the other shoulder. And another screw there with the shoulder. Now you can see them are on the inside there. Now this is my bender board and I'm going to use this to really fill in those gaps. So I, I cut it so it makes sense where I'm going to put it. And It'll hold in there most of the time. I can let it just hold itself in by friction and pressure by bending it. But I'm going to fill those big gaps. On smaller pieces, I might not have to do this. I could just use paper. But those are real big holes. And this is real thick paper. This is like number five and number six sheets. Even fold it in half to make it thicker. I could use pulp for this too. But I'm using paper because then it kind of feathers in, doesn't get so thick where I'm not filling in, where it just overlaps to hold everything. Same for the elbow. I push some in there. Fill that elbow. Brad Pitt's armpit. I'm going to cover that up. Sculpt some more in. Use my paddle burnisher to sculpt it a little bit. It, that bender board will soften a little bit and I can mold it, kind of model it a little, get where I want it. Here I'm covering those seams. Leaving my deck screws exposed so I can pull those out later. Some I might leave in. Depends on how much sense that makes. And the other armpit. Now here I'm going to actually screw that bender board into the cast on the outside. And I've got that in place. Now I can lay some pulp over that paper. And the other elbow doing the same thing using that soft paper with bonding agent to sculpt in the elbow, to, just to rough it in. And sculpt in a little bit, chase in on the back. Now I've got the upper torso posed and I'm going to dry that. Now I'm going to work on this leg. This is, again is his mount leg. I'm going to put a half inch steel rod in there so I don't want to fill that right now I just want to close these holes a little bit so using thick paper 
number six sheet with the bonding agent softening it up and, and just gingerly sculpting in that knee and ankle part where the holes are, covering it up. It's not going to be exactly right here, but it's roughed in. I've got the, the, that bend in the back, which I'll correct later. Now I'm covering up the knee and chasing that down. And that's the mount leg, and I'll dry that. And this is the knee that's really bent. This is really fairly thin paper here because I want to make sure I have that crease where the bend is so tight. I'll, I'll want to be able to work with that so I don't want to make it real thick there. But the knee itself, I'll tear another sheet of or cut another sheet of bender board, bend that in just to give me a, uh, a little bit of body, a little bit of firmness there. So when I lay my paper in, the paper will stay. Stop by that bender board and then I can sculpt in that knee. And again, it's not quite anatomically correct there especially where you see that screw go up to the top of the leg, but I will correct that later. This is just roughing it in, trying to get that pose right. This is what I call an articulated armature when I'm all done with this. I'll dry that. So I'm creating the articulated armature. And I call it an articulated armature because obviously it's a man, not just wire. And it's an armature, it's strong, so I can hang all the detail and finished work on top of that paper. So I'm going to use my deck screws to screw that leg onto the hip section actually going in right into his belly there and some longer ones and it's going all the way through you can see that's a nice long screw to get it through where I want it to pose that leg. That leg's in, on there it's, it's pretty strong and this uh, other leg I want to put up in the hole of the hip section and through the leg I'm taking a sheet of bender board and I'm just going to screw through that hip I got rolled pretty tight and try it in the hole it works pretty good might want to cut a little off just to make sure I get not too much because it's hitting up there. I cut a little off and then I bend it and push it up into his hips. Check it out, make sure. Now I've got him pretty much posed. Now I'm going to put another screw there. Now I didn't wet any paper around that bender board because I wanted to put screws through it. Now I'm going to fill those holes with bender board. And I've got it cut so it wraps around the outside of the leg and buttocks. And I'll put some short screws through that just enough to get through the bender board and into that cast. 
to hold everything together. And I'll put another one on this side. And another one. And around the back, I'll just bend this down and I'll put another screw in there. Bender work board works pretty slick for this. Then I can just cover it. And the screws that I want to take out, I'll leave exposed. Most of them I'll take out. I might cover some up. I'm going to fill in around this other leg because I had to make it a little longer there. Just to get the pose right and the anatomy right. And because of the way I cut it, it would lengthen there. So Now, these screws I want to take out, so I'm just going to expose them. Take them out after it's dry. Expose the heads of the screws. Fill in around where the thigh joins the hip. And underneath. Cover that up. And the top part, the front part, where that leg is really bent. He's articulating pretty well to that pose. And when that paper dries, he, he's going to be pretty solid there. Now I'm going to attach the head. So I roll up a sheet of bender board and make sure it's the right length to roll. Now I'm going to cover that with wet paper. Wet it with bonding agent. And painted it on one side, took it off, rolled it up, painted the other side. Now I'm going to put it inside his head, burnish it around. I'm going to wet those neck muscles. And I'm going to put that head in place just the way I want it. He's looking down a little bit. He's really up in the air on that toe. And so he's looking down a little bit on Achilles. He wants to hit him with that lance or that spear. And I'm covering the back of his neck with paper and the front of it around those muscles chasing and sculpting that paper in and then uh, I'm going to dry that and that's my articulated armature for the Brad Pitt sculpture except for his hands. Now I want to show you how I pose hands. Most of the time hands are holding things, not all the time, but holding things is the hardest pose you can make. Now watch the way I cut that. I cut it on an angle. Right there, that way, and then that way. I cut it through enough that I could bend it in the back side do the same thing only I cut this out underneath the hand where the fingers join the hand I cut that paper out so I can bend the fingers there where the knuckles are on top so you can see that those cuts mimic the same cuts on top only I just cut straight 
here I'm cutting out and now I'm cutting out where the fingers bend at the joints I'm cutting a wedge out there just like I did with the hand I'm going to put it on my soft cutting board and I'm going to cut the knuckles at the top here and I do that on both sides right there so I can bend it now I'm getting the top and I'm doing straight down cuts on the top there and there so I can bend it leaving I don't cut it all the way through I want paper inside so I can bend basically I'm cutting along joints and muscles the way it makes the most sense to me and I'll correct the anatomy as I go but the first cuts are to get the pose roughed in now I've got to bend that thumb in so what I'm going to do there is I'm going to cut it there I'm going to go straight down right along there and back and back of the thumb right there I'm going to do that on both hands because both hands are holding something. One's holding his spear, the other one the shield. Now I'm going to bend that down, that thumb. You see it's almost circumcised off. Sometimes I will cut it off and pin it on the way I want it. Now I'm going to get that thumb knuckle. There's two. There's a back one and there's a front one. So I'm going to cut the back one. Now I'm going to cut down on the front one. So I can pose the thumb. The thumb folds in. It's opposable. Opposable thumb. It, it, it's opposite to the fingers. That's how we hold things. The thumb really holds things on one side. Monkeys have thumbs, raccoons have opposable thumbs, cats don't have opposable thumbs, neither do dogs. Now I'm going to fold those fingers down and I'm trying to relax the memory. It wants to be straight because that's the way it was cast, but now I'm working it and pushing it on real small hands I'll do it the same way you know, you're going to see that in the next clips but I'll use tweezers to do this he's holding it like that and you see that knuckle on the index finger really comes up that finger comes out a little more than the rest when you're holding something in your hand just the way it works so I'm trying to get that pose and you can see I'm really pushing that paper if I cut it deeper I wouldn't have to push it so hard it's not going to be closed that tight but just to hold something now I'm going to fill in where the knuckles are and the way I do that is I'm going to take a ready sheet that I have torn and it's number three sheet and I'm going to wet it all around and I make a little ball which becomes the knuckle and I'm going to do that for every finger I'm going to sculpt in those knuckles so I have a, I have a knuckle and I'm filling the gap at the same time where I cut the cast and bent it. It'll leave the inside exposed, so I want to fill that. And the back of the thumb, I'll fill that too where that cut is. And I'm just using the paper to do it. Don't have to use bender board because they're just little cuts. So I'm going to fill those with my paper. And I have to do the joints, the knuckles on the hand.
now I'm going to correct the anatomy by putting a little more paper on top. And the fingers making that anatomy right so they're straight. And now the back of the thumb, the bottom of the thumb, base of the thumb inside needs some paper there. So I'm going to sculpt that in. And on top of the thumb, I want to length it a little bit. Sometimes you, you have to lengthen your fingers a little bit. And you know, on the pose and how much paper you have there. And that hand is almost ready for drying before I can go back and work on it and correct it a little more. But I'm not going to go much further than this. There is a still shot of the articulated armor, jaw, and the hands drying. And this is that rod that I put in his base leg, the posed leg for the mount. And you can see I laid that leg open and put it, made it pretty solid around that half inch steel rod. And then I'll close it back up. This is my one quarter life size traditional dancer doing the prairie chicken dance that we did for the Great Plains Art Museum in Lincoln, Nebraska. And this is the starter cast. I won't bore you on how to put it together, but I still have the screws in, so I'm going to take those screws out. Now, I'm going to open up these hands so I can reattach them. And I'll show you how I do that when I clothe this one. And you can see I'm cutting the neck, taking this head off first. I'm cutting the neck exactly the same way I did on the half-life size. I pose all my figures, whether a six life size or life size, I pose them all the same. And I do my cuts pretty much the same for the poses. Take the head off and then the arms right at the shoulders, straight cuts pretty much at the shoulders and take those off, those arms, under the armpit. And circumcise the uh, arm right off the body. Now this leg, again, up to the hip, down to the bottom of the buttocks, straight across. And I'm just going to try it. Now I'll be able to take it off. And the other leg the same way. Now I've got both of his legs off, both of his arms, his head. He's been at the waist. So I'm going to actually cut him in half at the waist too. And there's all my parts. I'll put them together at the waist first. But since he's bent, there's too much paper in there. So I'm going to cut a little bit off where the abdominals are in the front and use some bender board. And I'm going to put the bender board in and bend him. You can see he's 
bent the way I want him and now I'm just going to put a screw in to hold that in place and that will stay in there. I didn't wet it. I didn't make a post, a wet post and put it in there. I just screwed it together. Now I cut the top of that leg off because there's too much there for the pose. And I'm going to cut him at the knee and bend him at the knee. I'm just going to take that leg off, circumcise it at the knee. Again, again because of the bend, I want it bend enough that I'm going to cut off some more paper in the back and in the front just to make it anatomically right. Otherwise, it, it, it gets long, like I said before, and I'm going to do just like I did on the half-life size. I'm just going to screw it together. Let that screw work for me to move things around a little bit to get the pose on. I'm going to try it here. Now I'm going to reattach that leg to the hip. I got it bent the way I want it. And trying the other leg where I want that one. Cut a little more off at the top. There's just too much paper there for the pose. When I move that leg forward a little bit. And since I have bender board in there, I can just screw through the cast and into the bender board. And then it'll hold it enough until I can get paper around everything. And that's pretty much the way I want the legs. The arms are down on this pose. I'm just going to pin those at the top, the shoulder, push a pin in. I'm going to mount this temporarily on this acrylic sculpture stand with a couple of short screws. I'm going to put a steel mount in here like I did Brad Pitt's leg, but it's not going to be as thick. It's going to be pretty thick, but not as thick. Put two screws in there. I've got the bottoms of his moccasins in place with some thick hard board and uh, so they're finished off on the bottom, his moccasins anyway. Now I'm going to fill in around this post vendor board post that I'm going to use to reattach the head the way I want it. And then sculpt some paper in around that. And I gotta fill this gap in his back. and under his legs where that gap is between his back of his thigh and his buttocks and sculpting in some paper filling chasing creating the articulated armature Filling in all these gaps just with paper, kind of mushing it up and push it in the holes and then burnish it in with my burnisher. I'm using my paddle burnisher here. 
filling the knees pretty good size hole there so I'm using thick paper and and filling the back and sculpting that in around the arms I've got them pinned there but this wet paper will hold it enough to I won't need any more than just the pen underneath where the armpit would be and around front in the back of his neck and the front of his neck using my hands a lot here on this. Now I'm going to reattach the other arm. I want a little bend in the elbow on this one. Well, I cut it in the back of the elbow and bent it. Now I'm going to fill that hole. No need for bender board there. I'm just going to Put the paper in. I'm going to put a screw. I'm going to start it here and screw this one in. Right where the cast is, the inside of the cast on that edge. And then I can bend it out. And that screw will hold that so I can fill in underneath and around on top and all around that arm. Big wad of paper bag there. Well, it's not real big, but it's big enough. And one on top. I'm going to fold it all around there, sculpt, sculpt it in, and it'll dry and it'll stay there and I can take the screws out. And that's my articulated armature and he's all dry now, so I'll take the pins out and I'll take the screws out. I had them pinned there in front and screwed. Now I'm going to take him off of this mount. This is just a temporary mount. And I want to put a steel mount inside that leg. So this is what I did with Brad Pitt too. I just cut along the leg Brad Pitt's leg had a bend in it. This one's straight because that's the right pose for that leg. Now I'm going to go around the back of the heel, but I'm going to leave the bottom of his moccasins in place. And I'm going to make a straight cut down on both sides or inside and the outside of the leg just a straight cut he's hollow inside you know so I I can do this now I'm going to get it all the way through on both sides so I can pull the back of his leg off. I cut around the bottom of his buttocks again and now I've got it removed. I want to open this up a little bit down where the ankle is. A little too much paper in there to put a steel rod in there. This is a little more than a quarter of an inch steel rod 
I think it's nine sixteenths threaded steel rod. I'm going to clean that out down by his moccasin and work this so much. I'm just going to go ahead and, and cut this foot off at the ankle. It wanted to come apart there anyway, so I just helped it along. Now I'm going to clean that out because I want to put that rod in. Give me a little more room there. And inside his foot, I want to clean that out because the rod goes in there and a washer. Right there at the bottom, give me a little base. Make it nice and solid and a little wider base when I mount it. Now that washer fits in there pretty good. I need a bigger hole than that deck screw hole for my rod to go through. Try my washer and that fits pretty good and the rod goes through it. And I've got a nut, a long nut on the on the rod too, which will strengthen that inside that ankle. Now I'll put all this together. Now I'm going to fill in around that rod with paper underneath so there's no hollow parts there. I don't want anything moving around when I mount him. I, I want that leg to be pretty solid. I don't have to bend that rod because the leg is straight. Although that wouldn't be too hard to bend. Actually, I think I used a, a quarter inch rod for this. But even if it were a little thicker, I could bend it on my vise. I'm going to fill in around. underneath and over top that that rod it's thread rod chase that soft paper it's it's kind of like clay right now it's pretty soft the cast is hard and the rod is hard and the paper gets seals the two together is soft right now and wet but when that dries it'll be like wood it'll be real strong I'm gonna wet the inside of his foot where I want to reattach this part of the leg to the foot So actually what we have there is a foot on the back of the leg. Now I'm going to fill in where that hole is where the rod's coming out with some paper. Bernie sat down. I'm going to put a little more paper on the inside of his thigh there just to thicken it up a little bit. And now I'm going to put this mount of PVC. I'm just going to try this. I want, because everything is wet, I'm going to screw it down and I'm going to get that foot flat on the surface the way I want it. I can bend it and get it to set on that mount that mounting surface, temporary mounting surface. And I'll dry that. Hmm. 
can see it all fits together pretty well. Now I'm going to put some wet paper up inside there because I don't want that threaded rod to screw up inside there when I put a nut on the bottom of it. I don't want any chance of that so I'm going to stop that with paper inside the body and on top of the leg on top of the on the top part of that steel rod and I'm putting paper inside the leg so it's pretty solid when I fit the two together it's going to be a solid leg inside with a steel rod inside of it and now I'm putting the two halves together and I'll seam it. I'm going to leave that little gap by his buttocks just to give me a little more air in there to dry everything inside. I'll seal that up later. So we'll leave that little gap there. And I'm going to seam the two halves of the legs together here. Yeah, right there, I'm going to leave that. And seam it on the inside and on the outside. Put another layer on. He's going to have leggings on, so don't have to worry too much. Here I'm sculpting the face a little bit. I'm actually doing this at the museum. We created most of the pieces at the museum. There's a hand. You can see I, I pose that just like I did the half life size and there's the other hand they're together the same way here I'm pinning it because I took the thumb off and I'll use pins to hold the fingers where I want them because the paper is pretty thin and I, my cuts were deep I'm going to sculpt it by putting a, an awl inside because the hand's small I, I got a handle on it now so I can sculpt it. Basically I'm doing the same thing as I did the half life size. And you got the gist of it. I'm putting pants on him now. I, I use a leather sheet and I cut it in the pattern of a leg and wet it and now I'm wrapping it around his legs working those folds in where I want them it's just a pattern um, I usually freehand these what wet the paper and stretch it in. Kind of work those folds in the way I want. Sometimes they're just naturally there. Sometimes I'll I'll sculpt them in with paper. There I'm kind of working those folds in in the back of his leg and going over it with soft paper, thinner paper and sculpting on top of that. Using my burnisher sculpture tools. Smoothing as I go. The leather sheets have a leather grain and 
kind of matches what I'm doing. Open up the back of the legging because they're leggings. They're not real pants. Here I'm putting a piece through the crotch for the breech cloth because the breech cloth will go down through his crotch and out the other side. Now I'm going to cut his shirt and you can see I'm just taking a piece of paper. This is semi soft sheet because it's not going to be a leather shirt. It's going to be a shirt, not a war shirt of leather, but just a regular shirt that traditional dancers wear. And I've got a shirt pattern cut and I folded that piece of paper in half so I've got the front and the back and I'm going to wet the paper on both sides and let it soak in a little bit to get it soft and then I'm going to lay it over his shoulders first and work the paper around his waist Or to bend it where the belt would be. He's going to have a belt because he's got a bustle and the belt the bustle is fastened to the belt. Here's the front part of his shirt and basically I'm doing the same thing. Wet it, let it soften up in time by soaking in. And these semi-hard sheets hang together pretty good when they're wet. The soft paper won't do that. They've got to be hard sheets or semi-hard sheets. Soft paper will just tear when you try this. I've done it with soft paper or thicker paper, but it it's, doesn't work as well. I like to use the semi-hard for clothing, whether it's leather or just a semi-hard sheet. Now I'm going around the waist where the belt would kind of fold, uh, create folds in that shirt. And this is uh, a piece of leather paper that I put around his waist for his belt. These are his ears. I'll show you how I put his ears on. Cut those out. Those are little starter casts too. Tear a little piece of paper, wet it and fold it, kind of roll it. This will be the back of the ear. And I'll place that on the head where the ear, back of the ear should be. And then I'll form that end to be the back of the ear. Then I'll take my ear cast, wet that underneath and bend it because the ears are usually bent a little bit and sculpt it in around the ear. And there's his ear. Now there's a little more that goes to that, but I gotta dry it first. Now he's dry. I'm gonna put the collar on. I usually let the shirt dry it that way, the first front and back, and then I'll put the collar on and the sleeves. And this is the cut for a sleeve. It's basically the same pattern that a sleeve is. I'll use that first one since I know it's going to work as a pattern for my second one. 
Again, I just freehand these. I've done a lot. I have some templates that I've used in the past, but I don't, I've done it so much I don't have to use templates anymore. wet both sides and let it soak in. Add a little more there. I'm going to fold that. It's a little long at the top where that top seam should be and I'm, I'm going to fold it in underneath and work, work the folds in on that sleeve. I've got it kind of blousy. I wanted it to be blousy like a western shirt. And then I'll wrap it around and and uh, get it to bond to itself on the inside where that seam would be the inside of the shirt sleeve. I won't have to put cuffs on the bottom of this shirt sleeve because he's going to have some decorative cuffs that I'm going to sculpt out later and put them over the bottom of the shirt sleeve after I put his hands on. And while I'm doing this it, it tends to kind of soften up more and it behaves the way I want it. Basically just getting it attached to where I want it to be so I can dry it. And I can go around those seams with some soft paper and sculpt that in later. Kind of soft at the top I can push it on the bottom and get that wrinkle to go where I want. I guess you really call that a fold and it looks pretty natural. That's what the paper does. It kind of folds over itself. Now I'm going to reattach the hand by putting a post in the hand. The hand's finished and putting it up in where the wrist and the hand come together and he'll be holding a dance fan in one hand and a dance stick in the other and he's mimicking a prairie chicken so now the other arm Basically, I did the same way and put the hand in. Now I'm putting some cut fringe along the outside of his leggings and some bead strips right over that fringe. And along with starter casts, we have bead strips, bead kits available if you want those, if you want to do any anyone with beads. I, Africans use beads too. I've been to Africa and I've seen them. This is Patty's piece. Now this is, I, well I did the prairie chicken dancer. Patty did the prairie, prairie chickens there at the, at the museum and like I said we did these there and here's Patty. I turned the camera on her and they had groups of school children coming in watching us we can, we can alter the cast once they're put together this one is put together but but he's not dry yet and i and i kind of glued him together with this this is the glue that we use and it's called and she's talking about the bonding agent 
and showing the kids how we do this. She's trimming her casts. And these are actually quail casts that she uh, started with. And uh, the prairie chickens were probably about oh, two thirds life size. You can see it looks like a quail, but when she's finished, it's going to look like a prairie chicken. Basically, she just started with the body, and and then she alters it to uh, to make a chicken out of a quail, a prairie chicken. And now she's seaming that cast. It's a starter cast. She's made birds out of quails and chickens and turkeys and you make ducks. You can make just about anything. It's basically a bird body so you can create what you want out of it. This sculpture here is for the base that these uh, prairie chickens are on. It's a courtship. The uh, male I guess it would be a rooster or a cock or whatever you want to call it. Um, is courting the female and he's all puffed up. That's the female. She's going to sit there and the male sits on top. And there's the male. He's all puffed up around the cheeks. That's what they look like. You can see she's really changed the head. She's lengthened the neck and the beak. She's changed. Now she's doing these feathers that decorate around that uh, part that puffs out on the neck of the prairie chicken cock and she's looking at it trying to get it the way she wants it all the, all the way around and she's using tweezers after she cuts these feathers it took her quite a while to do all those feathers because they're all puffed out but it sure is beautiful all the detail she put on on that prairie chicken he's got kind of like eyebrows there above his eyes and feathers that go straight up on the top of his head you can see why traditional dancers like to do this dance their outfits kind of mimic the prairie chicken too and the way they dance. She's putting those feathers on the top of the prairie chicken's head going straight up. She has different size ones. She used a lot of pictures for this piece she calls Prairie Chicken Dance. And both of our pieces are in the museum's permanent collection. The Ekman method is not paper mache and the techniques cannot be duplicated with other store-bought papers, glues, or bonding agents. We developed this medium over time by formulating our acid-free handmade paper and bonding agent together and there is no substitute.